Hello, Spawn and Spawnettes. My name is Azel the Demon, and this is Darkest Dungeon. This is a game that came out a while ago. I'm not 100% sure what the release date is, but it is a great amount of fun, and it's it can be kind of difficult, or I guess just kind of dour to... Uh, to play through. So I kind of wanted to share this with you guys and show you guys some of the things that, that I've seen that, that really help in the game or what little tips I can give you guys to help succeed in the early game for Darkest Dungeon, which from what I've been able to tell can be some of the hardest is just the, the early game getting set up and trying to get a decent team of heroes together. So join me for the ride and let's see how it goes. First of all, I do want to say that losing your heroes, it sucks and it can represent a lot of hours that you've put in, but it does happen, unfortunately. So let's get started. If you guys end up getting the game or if, if you're unfamiliar with rams. it, keep to the side path. One second, I gotta turn that volume down. Let's see. There we go. Alright. Controls are pretty basic. This um, in brutal fashion. Click on... Oh, you know, as much as you can, you want to avoid getting surprised, but there's only so much you can do about that, because it's relatively random. So, we're going to go first. You want as much as you can to just do insane amounts of damage. That's Press something I've really seen is having them no high like area of effect abilities and if, if you need them having high single strike abilities can help a lot. Leave nothing I unchecked. don't there is much to be found in forgotten places. I can't immediately decide if getting an ambush Send a bunch of like message. raising your toughness or things like that returned, and their kind is any is better no or not longer welcome but so there's only so much you can do i i think that getting the higher damaging it's like zealous accusation it's minus 40 damage let's see yeah it's going to do like 3 to 7 damage oh and it's it's only the one guy anyway so let's do the 6 to 12 that'll be better that's something that's that's really nice in the game, is that when you pick an ability, when you mouse over down at the bottom, it shows you hero damage 4 to 9. That's how much damage this ability is going to do. You have an 85% chance to hit, you have a 5% chance for it to be a critical hit, and it's going to do 4 to 9 damage. So that's good to know. Having those, those ranges makes it a little bit better to plan for what you're doing, things like that. So we're just going to go through real quick. We're going to take out our brigand bloodletter here as quickly as we can, because until we get through him, we can't even touch How the guy in the back. The tide turns. And sometimes you do want to be able to take out the some of the gunners or the spellcasters in the back before you worry about the guys in the front. You know that they're just going to be tanky and they're going to take a lot of time to die. <laughs> so, Hey, cool, he took a bunch of damage from bleeding. Alright. turning point. Something that's really nice is when you get back to town, you are automatically healed up for Confidence your HP. The your sanity, crumbles. which is this yellow and black, these these squares here, that, that represents okay, how much stress you have. It it's it's effectively the same thing as sanity. So uh chest was trapped. But we resisted it, it's okay. That's something that I didn't think about or know right away. You do have to click on those chests in the rooms to get the loot out of them, so you gotta make sure you, you remember to do that. And then this is how you, you level up in the game. It's, it's not experience per se, but every time you finish a whole mission, your characters will get better resolve. And when they have better resolve, they are better able to deal with the stresses of adventuring in this horrible, horrible world. So, at the end, you are likely to get positive things and negative traits for each character. So we'll see, you see here, Reynold got Lockjaw, or Tetanus, uh, which decreases his accuracy and his damage, so that's kind of bad. And then we have Fangophobia, 20% stress resist loss 
if your torch is above 75%. So basically, if it's too bright out, Dismas is going to start freaking out. But he also has a, a hatred of beasts. So he's going to get better damage, and he's going to take less stress from those beasts. And that's just a nice little boost to your survivability there. And that's always nice. Once we get into town... Welcome home, such as it is. We got all of these this quest goals. Hamlet, these corrupted lands. Defeat all of now, the various... And you are bound um, to them. All the various boss b bosses out in the world. Then we have roster goals. Raise all of the different classes up to level 6. And that's kind of awesome. So, let's see. Starts off... We've got uh, the prologue, things like that. And then you get different... The, the Ancestor's Path. I'm guessing you get different cinematics or cutscenes or parts of the story for defeating each level of each different boss. And that's kind of cool. Most the graveyard shows where all of your, your heroes who have died end up. Stagecoach, this is where you recruit new people. So here we're going to get the Plague Doctor and, and the Vestal. Soldiers and outlaws. If we Fools can, we corpses. definitely want to all will find recruit their way more to people at a the time. Road is clear. Yes. Word is that. traveling. So, stirring in distant cities. once you get into we the game, you want to start having two or three full different teams of people. You want to have sort of a tanky type character. The best, in my opinion, is easily the Leper. The Leper is a fantastic tank. I love playing with the Leper. Then you want to have a couple of damagers. One of them who has like some decent crowd control. So... The the uh, the hexer, um, the occultist. That's what his name is. He's a great spot for that because he can do like a little healing on the side if you need him to, but he's not great at it, and it comes with a risk. But he has some great crowd control, and then he has some randomly great damage abilities. I love the rogue for his damage ability. And then you want to have a healer, absolutely. Sometimes if you're going in for like a boss fight, you might want to take two healers, which is why again the, the occultist is pretty decent for a that. Of madness so, and morbidity. Now, we've got begins. the Cove and the Darkest Dungeon still aren't actually in the game. I don't know if this is still technically early access or if the game has been fully released or not. I don't know. I'm very curious, but I don't know. You need to build your party from right to left. That's how it's going to show up in... <laughs> the usual suspects. Is that... Interesting. Apparently, we have different team name builds now. So whatever your your team is, it'll get a different unique name. That's very interesting. That's new from the last time I came out. So let's see. Is it... Right-click. Okay. When you right-click, you can see their pre pre preferred positions and their preferred targets. These are where you want to put your people. Absolutely, 100%. So, Hovill looks like she's good in either of the two back positions. So we're just going to leave her back there. That's fine. Gwynand is good into either of the two middle positions. So I'm going to leave him right there. Unless Dismas. Dismas is fine where he's at. Reynold is fine where he's at. So this is just a, an absolutely fine lineup. Doing that the in the beginning is now in gold. ridiculously Later. important. Having them in, in, in their blood. preferred positions means that they have the widest range of their abilities to use, and that means that you can do the most with them like more efficiently. It's, it's very, very good and very, very important to, to do that. With provisioning, I'm going to take 10 food and like eight torches. I think it the the tutorial says to take like six food and four torches. No, it's not enough. You need more than that. It seems like a waste because you're going through a lot of your gold. You do want to hold on to, to your gold, but properly provisioning your mission is so much more important than saving gold. Having more successful missions is going to net you more gold later on. So you absolutely need to provision yourself correctly. I like 10 and 8. 
if it's a longer mission, I'll start going up in increments of two. And then, I haven't done any of the hard missions yet, so I don't know where about you want your, your levels for that. So. And what better place to begin than the when you're of our actually dungeoning, I like to have my map here as scrolled out as possible so I can just see what all is going on. And then, ugh! That's the worst. That is the absolute worst thing that, that can happen. When you get surprised and they just shuffle up your entire team. And th this one wasn't too bad. They just pushed um, Raynaud all the way to the back. There's only so much you can do there. Luckily, though, these guys are pretty weak right now. It starts off pretty nice. These guys, with their tempting goblets, they drive your stress up a crazy huge amount. I have noticed that having your stress go up that high can be bad, but it is livable. You can, you can do it. It's okay. It's just not obviously ideal. Oh, this is the, the party party wide heal. Excellent. All right. Let's see. He's got emboldening vapors. That's that's fantastic. You know, I think yeah, we're just gonna do an incision. We're just gonna finish Press off this guy right here. Give them no if quarter. you can, you wanna make sure and take out enemies who have not yet gone. There's only so much of that you can do sometimes. And like kill the guy. Like him, when I did my um, my Witch Doctor's turn, I probably should have killed this guy, or I should have attacked him, but it, it wouldn't have killed him. So it wouldn't have been a useful plan of action. Ah, bummer. Well, yeah, we're going to take him out, As the theme which is going to heal her too, which is nice. A faint hope so now we've got our bone courtiers, or cor Tears, I'm not sure. They're, they just are, are going to keep doing the, the tempting goblet madness ridiculousness until... basically until I kill them, as far as I can tell. Different areas have different monsters, so when you're building your group, you want to make sure that you are building the right resistances and the right... in general, the, the right kind of skills. For oh, bummer, that would have been great. There's so much you can do, but that definitely would have been great. You want to make sure you're building the the right kinds of skills because, like for instance, these guys have bleed resistance. They will not bleed ever, but they will get stunned. So if you have like bludgeoning type characters, you want to use them against the when you're going in and against like bone type enemies. And then, excuse me, we're just gonna keep her healing. That's a skill I definitely need to level up, like, super Confidence soon here. surges as the enemy crumbles. When you can get a couple of really powerful healers, it is re gone, ridiculous just how long you can go in a mission. So let's see. For, I guess, relatively generic tips. Level up your healers at the end of your fight. Reorganize your team. Make sure they're, they're where they, they need to be. Um... Oh no, he blighted. So yeah, l definitely lo level up your healers and your tanks, honestly. Having your healer with her having like just a super great ability to heal is going to be immeasurably helpful in the entire game. So if you can do that, definitely do. Let's see. What kind of damage are we looking at? Between 2 and 5, whereas if I do this, we're at 4 and 9, so it might... No, of course not. I thought it might kill one all on its own, but no. Of course it's not going to happen. So there we go, we took a guy out before he was even able to go. I'm really thinking that, that Raynaud here is, uh, he's going to... I'm going to be able to show you guys what happens when somebody gets, like, super stressed out. Alright. He's going to smite. It's, it is an unholy. Excellent. So he's going to do 15 extra damage. Or not not 15, but 15% 15 extra damage, which is kind of awesome. Hey, cool. Killed him in one blow. That can be good. Let's see, you guys are both... You both have, you both have 10. Ah, well, I can shoot you for 5. Could have gone better, but say la vie. 
Bummer. Sometimes when it's just barely Mortality not enough damage, that's more frustrating. Because you look at it and you're like, really? You couldn't just take him down for me? Alright. I guess. Wow. Hardcore crit on the heels. I really, really like that. Alright, Zealous Accusation. Dodges! Curse the dodges! <sighs> I really wish that that had gone better. Like that. It, it, it could have gone like that. That would have been fantastic. Alright. I really have to get her direct heal, because now we've got the three of them, and they're doing just fine, but our tank, he's, uh, a trying really victory, hard to die. So. But a victory, nonetheless. Alright. Ugh, of course it's trapped, man. Bummer. But we did get a scouting chance. Excellent. It's little things like that. So yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I gave you guys a quick little taste. Um, once I get further on in the game, I will show you guys more of what I'm talking about with the, the higher-up abilities and what kind of insane amounts of survivability you can get when you really have your team spec'd out correctly. So just to leave you guys with this, like I said, absolutely level up your healer's abilities. Get yourself an occultist if you can. And their weird healing ability, it's, it's called like weird stitching or weird healing or something, it's spelled with a Y, all ridiculous like. That can be a great help. It's ridiculous how, how awesome that ability is. And then, don't push your heroes too hard. If you can, finish your missions. Absolutely finish your missions. But if you need to pull back, do not be worried about, is it, nope, let's see, ah, here it is, Abandoned Quest. Do not be afraid of this button. Don't be afraid of it. It seems like you're giving up, but it's better in the long run. You want to make sure that, that before you do that, of course, you get a, a decent amount of gold. You want to at least make sure that you make up what you spent going out because otherwise you're just wasting money on missions, and that's a bad time. That's never a good thing. You want to try and collect as much of, of these things as you can. Upgrading your estate is going to be also essential. So, yeah. I think that I will leave you guys with that for now. If you have any questions about anything else in the game, I understand that this was not as, as in-depth as it could be. I just don't want to bore you guys or drive you insane with my endless rambling. So if you've got any questions, absolutely ask them. I will try and get back to them as soon as I can. Like, favorite, and subscribe if you guys are enjoying the show. And if you can, share. I always appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the rest of the Aes of the Demon brand. I've got all the links in the description below. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time.